Hi YouTube! Welcome to my channel, So Fast I Young. Today's video is going to be uh, the process of my bodice being made. I did this a few weeks ago, obviously. You probably will notice my hair is much lighter in it. Um, but I finally got around to editing it all together and getting it into a good place. Primarily it focuses on doing piping um, and kind of some of the small uh, things I had to think about in order to, to construct it in the right order to get it to lay everything how I wanted. This costume is turning out really awesome. Uh, behind me on my uh, new cutting table I have the underpinnings that I'm working on cutting out right now. The uh, <clears throat> blouse and bloomers that I'm going to make. And I'm pretty excited. Uh, exciting trim that I bought showed up in the mail for the bloomers and just some ribbons and whatnot to add a little touch here and there of color. So I'm going to be walking through how I did a little bit of the piping and stuff, the feet I use on my machine, um, putting in the lining, just some of the sort of tips and techniques that I use. And now on to sewing. Uh, so I currently have the entire striped front and back section assembled. Uh, I put the lovely piping in the back uh, princess seams. Did a fit test, um, attaching these, just basting them to the front, make sure that everything was exactly where I wanted it. So the next step is going to be um, running piping all the way up this edge, around, down to the other end. Um, this is going to give us a nice uh, line when we insert this panel into it. That's why I already put the piping on here so that this is done so that it will go into the seam. Um, when I do that, I'm only going to stitch to the line here and I'm going to leave this corner free later for when we put in the lining so that we can like origami all the seams together nicely. There's going to be, I'll have to trim out some of the um, cord that's inside the piping and make sure that everything just lays how I want it to. So the way that I do the piping, piping gets laid on to one of the um, panels first. It's stitched in with a sled zipper foot. You line up the other panel and then stitch that on. So it's actually very easy. I love piping. It makes it makes seams look so pretty. Look at how pretty this looks. Pretty. It's gonna look so pretty. Like on the back. Yeah. Oh, and I love how these panels turned out. Like yeah, I'm just so happy with how this project is going so far. So, You may be wondering why I didn't pin any of that. Um, because I'm using a sled zipper foot, I can literally run this right along the edge and then use my um, plate markings to uh, know where my seam allowance is. I want to make sure that both the piping here and the seam allowance is upwards. So I want to just sew right to it, but not actually catch any of the piping or any of the seam allowance of uh, this part here. Okay, it'll make sense later. And it's gonna be tricky. Okay, so we end up, this is free, this is free, so when, we'll be able to manipulate this little section when uh, we get to dropping in the lining. Yeah. It'll look like that when it's done. It'll be gorgeous. 
since I forgot to talk about the actual sewing foot in the first part of the video, at this point, I'm going to do a little explanation of my zipper foot that I used on my machine. So this is, this is the normal foot that sits on my machine, right? And I have taken, I've actually completely removed it. The way that this one works is uh, you can change out your feet from here with a little uh, snap process. So this is normally what's on my machine. This is normally my zipper foot. Doo -doo. Uh, there goes my silly noises again. So this is normally my zipper foot. I hate this zipper foot. Um, this is what comes on a lot of machines nowadays. This uh, area right here where your zipper um, glides under is great if you are sewing on an actual zipper or a small zipper. If you are sewing on a larger zipper or if you want to sew piping, this is too small and generally ends up the piping or the zipper ends up riding over here instead and then your stitches end up getting pushed away from um, the actual spot where you want them. For a zipper foot that is just a sled, it has no nothing on the side. You can buy plenty of different zipper feet or plenty of different sewing machine feet that fit onto the shank of your machine. So the shank would be the part here that moves up and down. So I took this contraption off of my shank and screwed this on. Um, another one that I have that I also really love is this uh, very exciting little embroidery pounce, free, free, freestyle embroidery pounce uh, foot, which is cool. It helps you embroider free motion embroidery. Um, and this is the sort of attachment. The same um, foot here is the same brand as this and attaches the same way. You just slide it on and change it out. Right. So this is going to ride nicely next to the piping. You can see it really snugs it up. Um, I have control here of where exactly this foot sits in relation to the needle, so I don't have to change my needle much. Um, the difference is if I were to use this one, uh, the piping is so big it doesn't it doesn't fit. Uh, it wouldn't fit underneath it. It would end up kind of pushing this this way, pushing the piping out, and I wouldn't get this snug stitch right next to it, which is really important to me um, and to the final look of the garment. So, Okay, so I want to talk about this little junction right here. Um, I So what we've got going on here, because of the piping and stuff, is I did not stitch all of the way up to any of this. So this I'm actually going to probably end up doing a little hand tacking, maybe a little stitch in the ditch right on this side to close up this little seam. The easiest method is to kind of leave this free. You can see I stitched um, as close as I possibly could down this way and as close as I possibly could to this point this way. And it really is just because I want this very, very, very nice pretty clean fold and I get a very pretty clean fold. Okay so when I filmed this talking about this little uh, uh, section uh, and said I needed to hand sew it I was like totally wrong. So what one actually does here is if you turn it inside out uh, the seam allowance right here and catch the little catch this. So you need to leave it unstitched when you turn it uh, so that the piping can slide into place and fold where it proper where it wants to, um, or you can stitch, you could stitch the this, um, the top of the front first with the piping and then stitch all the way around. But then yeah, you're just gonna go right over that little hunk of piping right here to close up this seam and make it all. It still looks all pretty on the inside and on the outside. Yep. And that was a really messy filming, so I'm sorry. So one of the other steps that you're going to need to do is at some point you're going to need to take out a little bit of the piping uh, from the inside of the seam allowance area. So you don't need to take out much. You just need to kind of wiggle your piping so that you can pull out some of this and cut out about five-eighths of an inch so that you have... Um, that flat in your seam allowance. Otherwise it gets really bulky. So it really helps if you just take the time to wiggle this down and trim it out. And when it's trimmed out, you've got piping, 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 
no piping here and then this seam allowance will just lay nice and flat and so it will okay so this next section i'm going to preface by saying that i don't normally finish sleeves this way um, or like something that is sleeveless in this method normally i would <clears throat> leave the side seam open uh bag out the shoulder um, and the arm side and then flip it so I'm going to kind of do this in a slightly different method um, than I normally would, which I'm going to kind of explain a little bit right now before I film it all. I have pinned the uh, lining and the outer fashion fabric of the garment together uh, because I want to make sure that they are in the exact same place. So this is where I made sure that nothing was pulling too tight um, on the inside. So I've just pinned it together around the arm's eye. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to mark this. I'm going to mark in seam allowance five eighths of an inch in all the way around and then I'm going to transfer that mark to the inside and part of why I'm pinning them is together so that I make sure I get those marks in the exact same place because there are some spots in here um, that I found so like right here uh, on the inside the the fat like right here the fashion fabric is actually slightly longer than the lining fabric and then up over here I actually have a couple spots where the lining is slightly longer than the fashion fabric so I want to make sure that they're like as close to the same place as possible where I'm going to mark this after I mark this there's two ways I can do it I can either run um, a straight stitch all the way around just as like a stay stitch and then clip two but not through that stay stitch um, before I turn everything or I can throw caution to the wind and just clip to the seam allowance and then turn everything or clip too short of the seam allowance and turn everything and then top stitch it. I am probably going to do it the better way where I stay stitch it um, <clears throat> and then clip to just shy of the stitching so that I can turn everything inside against itself, you know, so like instead of this, um, and then I'll be able to top stitch them closed. So I'll have a top stitch all the way around the arm's eye. So that is my plan. We're going to see how that goes. Um, it also, so the other reason why this is going to work slightly better than the normal method is because of this piping. The piping that I put in this, um, the piping that I put in this is actually rather um, substantial piping. And so when I have it inside out, and I have right sides facing each other, the piping actually takes up a fair amount of room, I noticed. And so like, if I were to sew it to the seam allowance, I would actually like, when it was turned inside out, the the, the um, lining didn't make it all the way to the seam allowance, but then when I turned it right side out, because when I turned it right side out, um, the way it was supposed to, then it came all the way to the edge. And basically the piping just takes up, kind of pulls the, the uh, lining fabric and takes up some room, so. This way, uh, I know that everything is going to line up right. I know that everything's going to match. Uh, and I don't have to worry about space being eaten up by the piping and having a, a loose lining, lining that might, I don't want the lining to pull out the side or anything. So this way I know it'll be spot on where I want it to be.
Uh, okay, so what I'm doing here is I am clipping just barely to that line. I haven't done the whole sleeve yet, but what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to allow me to roll this under and that stitching is going to help me create a really nice edge and just hide it underneath. Okay. So I'm going to be able to do that on both the lining and the fashion fabric and that, um, then I'm going to be able to pin them together very precisely and top stitch them in a lovely fashion. So we'll get to that next. And what I'm doing is like I said, I'm going to turn, this side in like this, and this side in like this, and we're going to match up the seams. It's going to get easier as I go. Just, I need a starting point to get this going. It's not going to be the prettiest, probably. We also need to see, it might be easier for me to pin. It might be easier to do this from the inside. This is very thick. So, um, yeah, so you're just going to use that little stitch you put in there is basically like your turning edge. It's just going to kind of help you keep everything rolling over in a way that it fits together nice. Okay. So we're just going to continue that. all the way around the sleeve. And it should end up laying nice and flat. You should, like you can see, there's not a lot of excess from this point to this point. You can also just literally finagle it with your fingers uh, into that position so that it sits just a little bit um, inside. That way you're not gonna see it from the outside. And so when you'll, when you'll stitch, I'll probably end up top stitching from this side so that it can make sure that this uh, maintains its position and gets caught. So, okay, so this is the final product of what I was doing. As you can see, I uh, was not offended by the idea of top stitching this. This is not visible enough to me where I felt like I needed to bother hand sewing it together, but you could. There's nothing wrong with saying, oh, I'm going to hand sew these things so that you can't see the stitch. Um, or perhaps you don't feel as comfortable on your machine where you can get this close to the edge, uh, without, you know, wobbling or whatnot. So yeah, that is how it is all finished. Yeah. Here are some pictures of the finished bodice. I realized that I forgot to actually film, uh, it in whole on the mannequin before I started pleating on the skirt because I got very excited to pleat on the skirt, which will be part of the next video, I promise. Thank you for coming along with me on this silly journey through this costume. Uh, I really hope that everyone is enjoying what they're seeing, the ones that actually take the time to watch videos. So I am considering making a video uh, that talks a little bit more about myself. If anyone has any questions, wants to know about my journey in the sewing world, where I started, what I've done, or if you want to ask specific technical questions about sewing, you know, leave something in the comments and I'm going to sort of start collecting a few of them and hopefully in the week or so, if I can get some more from YouTube and some off of Tumblr and maybe Instagram, I'll put together a little video that kind of talks about um, sewing myself, you know, kind of a little ask me anything. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel. I really love to hear from people, so leave me some comments and questions, and uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful week.